Hello and welcome to the Stardog Academy training on GraphQL in Stardog. I'm Brendan Newland, one of the solutions architects at Stardog. To let you know a bit more about me, I earned my PhD in the academic study of religions and cultures, then conducted research in leadership development, philanthropy, and the nonprofit sector. In the course of managing research data for these complex topics, I developed proficiency with the R language for programming and data science and became a graph database developer and knowledge graph enthusiast. Today, I'm going to introduce GraphQL in Stardog. In this training session, you will learn the comparison between GraphQL, RDF, and Sparkle, how GraphQL works in Stardog, how to query Stardog with GraphQL, how GraphQL schemas are handled in Stardog, and how to automatically generate a GraphQL schema from RDF data. Let's get started. This section is about GraphQL, Sparkle, and RDF. GraphQL is a declarative framework developed by Facebook to provide a graph abstraction over one or more data endpoints. Let's begin with a comparison between Sparkle and GraphQL. Sparkle has deeply analytical queries taking advantage of reasoning using logical and statistical inference. It is standards-based and vendor-neutral. It's built for interacting with graphs, representing ontologies, and describing relations between nodes and edges as triples. It's extremely flexible, with power to derive complex insights from connected data. GraphQL is built to address the needs of UI developers, and especially queries directed toward HTTP endpoints. It's not well equipped for drawing connections between types or logical or statistical inference, and it has less expressivity. It describes a simple syntax that is better suited to more basic queries against a graph abstraction. RDF and GraphQL terminology are roughly parallel. In RDF, you have nodes, classes, properties, and literals. And in GraphQL, you have objects, types, fields, and scalars. RDF and GraphQL data types are also roughly similar, with integers, floats, strings, and so on. This concludes the section comparing GraphQL, Sparkle, and RDF. This section is about querying Stardog with GraphQL. In Stardog, GraphQL is implemented via query translation, meaning that GraphQL is translated into and out of Sparkle. It operates on both materialized and mapped or virtual graphs, and it supports reasoning. GraphQL queries can be run via the CLI, HTTP API, or the Java API, and queries will apply to a union of all graphs by default. Here's an example of how you can use GraphQL in Stardog Studio. First, open Stardog Studio in your browser by navigating to stardog.studio and connecting to a server. Next, select GraphQL from the Languages menu at the bottom right. Let's say we want to know about the albums in our music database along with their release dates. Stardog translates the GraphQL query into Sparkle to execute it against the database and return results. We might also want to know the name of the artist. I'll provide an alias for the album name to avoid confusion. We may want different kinds of information about different kinds of artists. If the artist is a solo artist, we want to know the artist's name. But if it's a band, then we also want to know the names of all the band members. We might as well also add information about tracks on the album, like the names of songs, their lengths, and their descriptions.
And finally, let's see these albums in reverse alphabetical order. Stardog has a read-only API for virtual graph queries, and queries can be defined in files that define the directives, the objects, and the object fields that you're interested in. GraphQL queries in Stardog can take advantage of query variables, such as using reasoning or referencing a schema, as well as other directives, such as binding, filtering, or hiding results, and features such as ordering, paging, referring to named graphs, and more. For more information, please refer to our docs. This concludes the section on querying Stardog with GraphQL. This section is about GraphQL schemas. Stardog provides flexible GraphQL schema handling. You can optionally use custom GraphQL schemas for things like translation, where you'd want to modify the default GraphQL to RDF or Sparkle mapping, for validation to define valid GraphQL instances, or restriction to limit a client's view of a graph to a particular schema, for example. Stardog also provides CRUD management and use of custom GraphQL schemas. You can also select the appropriate schema to use at query time. Stardog includes a feature that allows you to generate a GraphQL schema based on the classes and properties that you've defined in your turtle file. You can use the data model command to export a GraphQL schema. Each RDFS or OWL class defined in the RDF data will be mapped to a GraphQL type with one built-in field IRI. Any property whose domain is set to that class will be added as an additional field to the type. All the classes in the database will be exposed under the top-level query type. When exported as a GraphQL schema, the RDF data I showed earlier would look like this. This concludes the section on GraphQL schemas. In this training session, you learned the comparison between GraphQL, RDF, and Sparkle, how GraphQL works in Stardog, how to query Stardog with GraphQL, how GraphQL schemas are handled in Stardog, and how to automatically generate a GraphQL schema from RDF data. Thanks for following along. If you have any questions, please review our Frequently Asked Questions page or head to stardog.com docs for additional information.